probably already know that Smith Line's attorney moved to withdraw yesterday. That's the same attorney that represents Esme Bianco. Motion to withdraw was short, as it should be. Just cited the undue, unreasonable difficulty that the attorney says he's having in representing the client. Some unspecified breaches of the retainer agreement and asked to be relieved of representation by the court. Now, you know, when you file a motion to withdraw, you're not relieved from obligations in the case, so I don't know that that argument by itself carries a whole lot of weight, but we'll just have to see what the court says about that. But where the spiciness occurs is in the exhibits to this thing. So this starts off with an email exchange between Manson's attorneys and Smithline and Bianco's attorney. And Smithline's attorney says, uh, as we discussed last week, we agreed that in order to seek additional continuances of Ms. Smithline's deposition, I would ultimately need to provide to you and the court a written assessment from Ms. Smithline's psychiatrist that she is unable to participate in litigation due to the current status of her mental health. For reasons which I am ethically required to keep confidential, I cannot provide this written assessment. So I'm going to have to withdraw as counsel for Ms. Smithline. Interesting. Then Manson's attorney says, hey, you haven't given us enough information to evaluate this motion, including whether Ms. Smithline consented to the withdrawal. Regardless, the issue will not be resolved before Tuesday's deposition, and Ms. Smithline is required to appear. We're going to keep it at the original start time. And then they note that they don't think they've been um, produced the documents that they should have received. Smithline's attorney comes back and says, you know full well, I can't ethically provide more information to you regarding this type of motion than I've already provided. For what evidently seems to be your request, I will tell the court my motion that you're opposed to my withdrawal. I'm copying Gene as your position on this issue will also be attributed to him and his firm, and he has a right to know the course of action you're requiring that I take. So Elwanger's ex uh, accelerating, escalating this thing a little bit. And yes, Ms. Smithline consented to my withdrawal, he says. Howard comes back and says, will Ms. Smithline be here in person for her deposition on Tuesday? Will her delinquent document production be implemented today? Howard, as you know, I filed a motion to withdraw as counsel on August 27th. I'm writing to ask your agreement to take this Ms. Smithline's deposition off the calendar and allow her the chance to seek replacement counsel. If you won't agree to do it, I'll have to file a motion for protection because the court has not yet uh, rule on the motion to withdraw. Let me know if you agree. Howard says, no, I'm not taking this off the calendar. Okay, Howard, you confirm you oppose the motion. Howard says, what are the grounds? She was supposed to appear two weeks ago from her duly subpoenaed deposition and appearance confirmed on multiple occasions by you. On the day before her appearance, you represented she'd flown to the United States to obtain emergency psychiatric care and could not appear. Rather than forcing you to make a motion for protection at that time, we made a professional accommodation to you to continue the deposition date. You promised nonetheless, immediately complete the full document production representing that you already had the responsive documents in your possession. Apparently that representation was not accurate as the product, promised production was not made. You also promised written evidence from the treating professional of her medical inability to have attended the deposition. You failed to provide that. Finally, you said Ms. Smithline would appear for deposition tomorrow. You've ignored multiple requests seeking confirmation about that. So yes, we oppose and we ask this entire email be included as part of your motion. So, Elwanger, you know, fights back and says, hey, I made a motion to withdraw and you're asking me the grounds for that. Um, I'm clear on that, right? Howard uh, raises his tone of voice a little bit and says, you represent two different claimants who have conspired to create a false narrative, which is why the deposition of your client Smithline is so critical in a case brought by your client, Bianco. We believe your attempts to avoid Ms. Smithline's deposition are a ploy to preserve Ms. Bianco's fake claims. And Elwanger says, cool theory. Anyway, do you oppose the relief we're seeking? Yes, in red. We oppose the relief and ask this entire email be included as part of your motion. So there's the nasty exchange between the attorneys on this as it's uh, heated up. So some crazy developments in the Marilyn Manson case. Ashley Morgan Smithline, who has always seemed one of his uh, less stable accusers, and some of us believe the weakest link among the accusers against him. There has been some crazy stuff going on. She is claiming that she fired her attorney, Jay Elwanger, way back in April, no doubt as a result of that disastrous appearance in front of The View. Uh, that she and her lawyer made, but she's claiming that she fired him in April and that basically since then Elwanger has been maintaining a kind of a charade that he is her legal representation when in fact he is not. That is what she's claiming. 
Now, there have been a bunch of uh, emails and texts and so forth that have come out in the last couple of days. It seemed that a couple of days ago that Ashley Morgan Smithline was the one who was lying about her relationship with her lawyer. Uh, there were some documents that were released, legal documents and emails that made it look like she had lied to her lawyer about receiving psychiatric care, a psychiatric appointment that had apparently made it impossible for her to sit for a deposition in Esme Bianco's case. Now, it turns out that that might not be true. In fact, probably isn't. Ashley Morgan Smith Lyon has now released a text and she has contacted Marilyn Manson's attorney. This has all come out again in a number of legal documents. Uh, but apparently, Ashley claims that she fired her lawyer, Jay Elwanger, in April, that he has been basically masquerading as her attorney ever since. I guess that he thought, if this is true, I guess that he thought that Ashley uh, was such a fruitcake that if he just if he just hung on long enough that she would change her mind or she would forget that she would fi had fired him or maybe she would just be so desperate that she would decide to keep him on, I don't know. But apparently she, you know, she's shown a number of texts uh, and, and so forth indicating that she fired. And so as a consequence of that, now Marilyn Manson's lawyers are trying to get L. Wanger kicked off, uh, uh, basically kicked out of this case. You know, L. Wanger was representing not only Ashley Morgan Smith line, but Esme Bianco. So, you know, it, it may be, in fact, that L. Wanger is guilty of some gross legal misconduct and very, very shady, problematic behavior. Uh, now, I don't want to take what Ashley Morgan Smithline says at face value because we know that she has a history of lies and misrepresentations and just craziness. I'm sorry, Ashley, but all someone has to do is go to your Instagram and look at all the fake pictures that you're passing off as yourself to see that there's an issue with you psychologically. However, you have shown text uh, conversations with your lawyer indicating that you told him you didn't want him to represent you anymore and that you had fired him in April. Now, in the text, L. Wanger uh, basically makes it seem that he, he can't trust Ashley's request to fire him. At one point he says, I'm not even sure who I'm talking to. This doesn't sound like you. Um, he accuses her of erratic behavior and so forth. And so it's clear from the text that L. Wanger is stalling her in these conversations and is trying to put her off and is even, is even trying to tell her, oh, this isn't you I'm talking to, this is someone else, so I don't have to listen to what you're saying. Um, who knows what the actual truth is, right? It's looking like L. Wanger was fired and that he is shady as shit and, and that he's on the way out. But then again, you know, we need to hold our breath. Let's let's see the full story. But it certainly is looking like he was the more problematic one in this professional relationship and not Ashley Morgan Smithline, despite, as we know, all of the lies that she's told about Manson and the conspiracy that she joined against him. Now, I've seen that Ashley Morgan Smithline uh, has been talking to Leslie Lane, a Manson supporter, someone that I interviewed on my channel earlier uh, until she requested I take the interview off because she felt she was being harassed by a YouTuber. At any rate, Leslie Lane has always been a firm supporter of Manson, and she has been in conversations that she has posted with Ashley Morgan Smithline in the last 24 hours. And, uh, you know, it seems like Ashley uh, is more open than she had been in the past to talking to Manson supporters. And I wonder if since Manson's attorney, Howard King, is being very kind and very helpful to Ashley, you can see this in the conversations between them that have been posted, that have come out in the legal documents. Um, it seems like because Manson's team is being very kind and helpful to Ashley, you know, I, I hope that maybe that could have some effect on her psyche and maybe she will be amenable to, um, uh, to backing out of this, this lawsuit against Manson and her accusations against Manson. However, I wouldn't hold my breath. So people have been asking for the receipt. So let's jump to page 58. All right. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Guys, trust Howard King, man. I don't know why you doubted him. 
I, 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 I had, I had not had an opinion on the attorneys in this, um, but you're getting one now. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he's not a lightweight. I think he's a pretty high price guy. All right, Ashley Morgan Smithline. I fired him April. So what was he just a line and using your name because of the lawsuit he has? God, I hate this guy. I chucked him in April. Let's see if I can get this zoomed in here. Ashley, it's not that simple. You have a federal court lawsuit pending. I'm not sure who is writing these text messages, but it doesn't sound like you. We need to speak on the phone. Mm -hmm. It may not sound like me because I put up with all this for too long. Please put in writing why it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I just tried calling you. I need to speak to you on the phone to verify that your number has not been hacked. Given the past situation with your stalker and the complete change in your position over a year of representing you, I am uncomfortable communicating with you further via text. Yeah. Okay, please explain in writing what's not that simple. I make these statements on my own. I'm at a... And I guess we truncated to you know hide the position, which is smart. A plaintiff in a federal um, court lawsuit. If you fire me, you'll have to hire another lawyer to replace me or represent yourself pro se in the lawsuit. And the judge would have to approve any motion to withdraw as your lawyer. I don't care about the media and your case. You wanted me to find a producer and director to do a documentary movie about you, so I did. They emailed me today, by the way. The CNN piece is off because they're shutting down CNN+. Plus. And you went to People Magazine before you ever hired me. So if you don't ever want to speak to the media again, I'm fine with that. I don't care about that. But you're right in the middle of a lawsuit. So firing me is a little more complicated than sending a text message. And I'm honestly very concerned about you. This is all very different. And now you know it's me. No, I don't. No audio came through in that video message. If someone has hacked your phone, they would have access to your videos too. We need to speak on the phone live. Okay, that makes sense. She said that she fired him on video to me. So now I know. Some of this stuff is confusing, and now it's all coming out clear. Isn't it wonderful how it's organized this way, too? Because it's like it, it, this organization of the, of the information and to the chat, this is intended to make the judge view this the same way you are. It's like, I see what you're saying here, but where are the receipts? Oh, there are the receipts. But there's still a doubt here, but where are the receipts? Oh, there are the receipts. It is to make you question every step and to basically lay the foundation one block at a time because this appears to be from Mr. Elwanger who should know better than to put into a DM text message that might get released in the public that he was looking for CNN produ production deals and movie deals for Ooh. his client and that might have been his primary goal yeah that's true this guy's just too much of an idiot just jumped into it very true all right so what's next boss um so we've got the dms the dms are right back and forth uh that's clearly well unless jay uh unless jay wants to deny that he's sending these dms which appear to be from him uh, it, it surely looks like oh there's one i'm looking to discharge you please let me know when it's done and what needs to happen and Look, when a client says that, you don't you don't say those other things. You don't say those other things. And no, you don't have to represent to the judge who is going to be taking over your lawsuit. That is an actual lie to your client. You fucking asshole. I didn't even see that part. <laughs> That's a lie to your client. You don't need to make that representation. That is lying to your client to keep them from firing you. Once they fire you, you're done. Get out. Oh, I see what's going on. This is her texting with um, somebody in Howard King's group. I agree to that person suspension. that responded to her. <sighs> see if there's. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I agree to these responses. I have no. I have. I have no rebuttal to that. What do I say back to that? Look, then, I. I feel. I. I really feel for her. 
this I mean, is geez. this is bullshit. This is getting railroaded. You're you, the attorney is leveraging the power and fear of unrepresented court, leveraging that to box her in. That is that is. I'm sorry. People come to you as an attorney because they trust you. They need to trust you. They need to rely on you. You can't if you lie to them when they're in this posture. That is that is truly disgusting. Okay, it's the same thing here. Try calling him. Guys, manipulative as F. We've uh, already said fuck like nine times. All right. And well, it's going to well, happen more. Okay. I can't not. Like, there's a lie again. Good lie. Way to go, jackass. I need to speak. I love this dope. I, I'm trying to get the symbolism of this. I, I, I think that's. I, could... I think. I think. I think that's what it was. You wish you could click the video because I'm guaranteeing that stove. She's yeah. pointing the camera at that and she's talking. Yeah. Huh. Okay. German. Interesting. Um. He claims you couldn't do the deposition because you flew to the stated states. I guess for an emergency mental health evaluation. What? I had to shoot for a hotel. He's a lying liar. Uh oh. Uh -huh. So there is no mental health problem. Hmm. God. Okay. So if you're telling everybody that your client I, well, has a I, mental I, health I, issue. I, no, I don't. Uh, I don't want. I don't. I, don't wanna, I, don't, I, I also don't. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because it, we don't. And, and honestly, we shouldn't be inquiring into that. Like whether she is or is not seeing therapy or seeing seeking counseling. The fact is that 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 being the reason on this particular instance was a lie. Right from the lawyer, though. So I mean, he's making claims that she's doing. It. Okay, that, that's a problem. Um, I know it's obvious you didn't even fly to the states. He claims he can't show proof because of client privilege. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, here we go. Text with him. I'm leaving back to what London on Wednesday. I'll do whatever I need to do. Please do not contact any of my friends. And the Carl thing was really out of line. He's a complete. I don't know what that means, but who wants to be famous by being involved in this. Does this mean you are going to get me a letter from your psychiatrist? No. I've been in London since March, not under the care of a, psych a therapist, psychiatrist, GP, anything. I don't know why you were, what you were doing, contacting my friends, causing me greater trouble. And my psychiatrist, as most psychiatrists, prescribes me the meds I've been on for over 10 years. Full stop. We don't discuss you. This is some dirty stuff, man. So see, we, we do see that she is she is seeing a psychiatrist, but not about this case. She's being treated medically. We don't need to go into that, but it, basically calling him out. Yeah, and she, yeah, she's just saying it's normal stuff. Stop lying. Stop. I was in LA for an emergency health session. Stop lying. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Oh, here we go. It's an email to her from Howard. Mm, she starts the communication. This is the one he refers to. Okay. <laughs> For a Me Too lawyer, man. Doesn't listen to the word no, eh? in it? It's a weird ism. I don't know what that is. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I know you told me you were no longer represented by counsel, but as long as J.L. Wallinger is your counsel record, I am not permitted to communicate with you absent his consent. Yeah. And then the email that you see below where she is responding to, that's where she sends the text message exchange. She screenshots oh, the text I message see. exchange and sends it to, to Manson's attorney. In the email. Okay, got it. So and and and, and to M Bar, she could be. She would be the worst client if she was lying about this stuff. I don't know. I don't know. But what at the very least, what you can see is that what is being relayed or conveyed by Mr. Elwanger in these moments, like mm -hmm. cause this is almost simultaneous. At this point in time, if I'm an attorney, I'm not saying another word. I can't. I cannot say another word. I have to ask for an emergency motion for the judge to let me out of the case because I am. I am. Now this, okay, this is going back. Look, July second, twenty nineteen, and this is where I'm going. Uh oh. There's stuff in here because it's going far enough back. What is she releasing here? This isn't about her lawyer. This is. 
I hate to say about the alleged conspiracy. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that she is blowing it all open. Oh, before you before you get there, before you get there, because this is a good one. So pull that one down and pull the document, uh, pull Howard King's dec- uh, declaration up. Yeah. And go to the email exchanges. Oh, is it the same ones that I showed you before? Uh, exhibit A. Oh, look at this. J.L. Wenger, July 1, 2022. To what? Howard King. You have been misinformed. Subsequent to our conversation, Howard, I confirmed our continued representation of her, and she rejected your settlement overture. Oh. First of all, if Whoa. there are settlement, if there are settlement discussions, a settlement offer, a rejection of a settlement offer, That is the client's possession. They own that. I don't go near it. I don't touch it. If I receive a settlement offer, I am I am absolutely ethically bound to relay that settlement offer, no matter how ridiculous it is, to my client. There are times when someone will give a settlement offer to me that's so ridiculous that I say, I'm going to ask before you say that that's a formal settlement offer that you discuss this with your client because I know if I relay this to my client, he's going to blow his lid. But... Because the second they say this is a formal settlement offer, um, second he says that, I have to relay it. And I cannot reject it unless I have pre-authorization to reject it under a certain dollar figure. This, this is, is July 1st that he asked two months after April. Mm-hmm. Three months mm-hmm. after April. Geez, sorry. Bad math. Um, wow. Wow. So Howard is asking Jay directly. Please. So he's setting this up. He's teeing this up. He, he's he, he's covering his bases. He, yeah. He because if he's seeing this in the news, and he's negotiating with an attorney, how is he going to reach a settlement agreement if the attorney is signing off but not the party? Like, if if one tenth of this is true. And and uh, right now, I'm. I mean, this this these are the receipts. This is these are part of emails. If one tenth of this is true, this is leaving somebody scrambling for their bar license. I want to look. Hold on. Are you ready to? Wow. <laughs> and so he's going right on along here. Got Doubling. This. 92 pages of this 92 pages dude yep yes i can accept service um holy cow confirming availability for depositions that's exhibit b Uh, exhibit c is the the confirmation of the of the stenographer for the depositions Uh, exhibit d you've got different filings that are being done by the parties in this moment uh, okay, notices so for the depositions. The, okay, we have confirmed the, her uh, availability and the notice. So this is going to John, which is another attorney, I guess. John yeah. Snow. Go to oh, John Snow. I know. <laughs> it's perfect, right? So um, much theater. Oh, this is so much fun not fun this is terrible i'm not i'm not making light of someone's circumstances this is fun because i don't like this attorney and howard king did all the right things in keeping everything and keeping his receipts and attaching it to this uh j l wanger to howard king actually you know what scroll to the bottom so we can see the beginning of this exchange okay, thread cool yeah we got the thread so it, you can see where he leaves off yep now now you can go up from there that's the confirmation 
Howard King following up. Jay, I don't believe we received the promised full Smithline document production in response to the subpoena. Following up again. Following up again. Jay, will you be producing the promised Smithline documents today? They were due yesterday on a different front. You represented that Ms. Smithline could not appear yesterday as she had traveled to Los Angeles for emergency psychiatric treatment. Unverified sources have informed us that Ms. Smithline remains in London. I realize the limitations on information you might be getting from your client, but are you certain she is in Los Angeles? Basically, we are getting information. This is your opportunity to make the hurt a little bit less than what it will be. Please just be legit. And you can see, I love this because oh, it's great. I have a feeling that his unverified source is I do possibly too. this person. I do too. Or, or this person is posting actively on, in, on social media that they are in a different country. Yeah, oh, because it would it would have a stamp. I mean, if she did, and a lot of them would just geo stamp it. Totally. Go to the next email. It gets better. Okay. Okay. Uh, Howard Bianco plus privilege log were responsive to the subpoena. Sorry if it wasn't made clear in the production email. That was basically the five documents they produced. I have no information that your unverified sources are correct. Oh I like God! The, this is the, the line. <laughs> this is what you wanted. <laughs> You do not know on which continent your client currently exists. <laughs> I mean, at this point in time, what time is that email? So you've got, look, this five is minutes, like This is like a parent later. talking to a child here. Uh-huh. Five minutes later, um, he oh sends this back. And then, and then Jay, Jay just takes the, takes the, takes the dagger. And then he's already got it hovering over his chest and he plunges it deep inside of the chest cavity. I already told you that she's in Los Angeles as I am for about 10 more minutes. If you have information to the contrary, then share it. Your quote, unverified source is Instagram. Uh. Then, you, then you might not be totally familiar with how that app works. Oh my God. Holy. So he's not only, not only is he caught out, he's doubling down and being snippy. Oh my God. This has got to be frameable for Howard King. Uh, you're going to want to be on page. The bottom of the thread begins on page 49. Okay. And I'm going to step away for a second. I'll let you read in a dramatic voice. Oh, in a dramatic voice. Oh, please my. tell me. We set it for 8 a.m. on Tuesday on the assumption that she will be in the UK. If she is there, we can set it for a later time if you prefer. If she is here, we, we request that she appear in person for a deposition from Howard King. Jay, Howard, as we discussed last week, we agreed that in order to seek additional continuances of Ms. Smith's lines deposition, I would ultimately need to provide you and the court a written assessment for Ms. Smithline's psychiatrist that she is unable to participate in litigation due to the current status of her mental health. For reasons which I am unethically, or I am ethically required to keep confidential, I cannot provide this written assessment. Accordingly, I'm going to have to file a motion to withdraw as counsel for Ms. Smithline. Please let me know if you oppose the motion. That is so smooth. Oh, she's got a problem, but, um, well, I can't really say what the problem is because, you know, it's, it's going to be private. Go back so. to that one. Go back to that one. The language that was the magic words. Oh, where was it? Here's it here. Uh, as discussed, we agreed in the order to seek additional blah, 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 assessment. Yada, yada, yada. Unable to, uh, for reasons which I'm ethically required to keep confidential, basically which communication, it, I communications mean, between me and my client, client. Right, but also like he's worrying about keeping the confidential for health concerns. So you know, it, it, no, oh, he's trying to hide in this little valley here. Nope, he's not. No, he's not. Let me translate this to the, to the non-lawyers in the chat. When I write a statement, a statement like this, I am saying this. I am saying my client lied to me. I cannot tell you they lied to me. Therefore, I cannot uh, provide this written statement. That is exactly what that translates to. J. L. Wanger, at this point in time, has just told Howard King his client lied about the medical treatment. He can't provide the treatment information. That's what that statement is. Oh. It's a pass the buck. That is a 100% blame cast on Ashley Morgan Smithline. That, based on what I just read in that motion, is complete and utter horseshit. Well, yeah, when we see everything else, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. 
All right, so here we go. Jay, you haven't given us enough, enough information to evaluate your motion, including whether Miss Smithline has consented to the withdrawal. That was deliberate. Tell me that wasn't deliberate. Oh, yeah. Because he's saying, this isn't your client. Where's her statement? Where's her consent? Prove that it's your client. Um, regardless, this issue will not be resolved before Tuesday's deposition, at which Ms. Smithline is required to appear. Because you did not respond to my note on the start time, we will keep it at the notice start time of 8 a.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. Jackson Trugman has also pointed out your failure to produce documents that should have been part of the full production of Smith uh, you, documents. You, you, you didn't read the quotes. You have to read the quotes because some people are, quote full production, which oh, I thought I stressed it. Of, okay. Quote, full of shit. <laughs> 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 quote unquote full production of Smith Lies documents responsive to the subpoena that you promised would be produced last week. Howard. Oh, here we go. Howard, you know full well that I ethically can't provide more information to you regarding this type of motion that I have already provided. Per what evidently seems to be your request. God, he's got this little needly tone. I will tell the court in my motion that you are opposed to my draw. Copying Gene as your position on this issue will also be attributed to him and his firm, and he has the right to know the course of action you are requiring that I take. Oh my god, you little fucking piece of shit. And yes, Miss Smithline does consent to my withdrawal. Um, will Miss Smithline be here in person for her deposition on Tuesday? Will her delinquent document production be implemented today? Oh, uh, okay, this is going to get into my favorite exchange we talked about before. Howard, as you know, I filed my motion to withdraw as counsel for Ms. Smithline on August 27th. I am ready to ask your agreement to take Ms. Smithline's deposition in the Bianco v. Warner et al. case off of tomorrow's calendar to allow Ms. Smithline time to secure replacement counsel. If you will not agree to do so, we will need to file a motion for protection on behalf of Ms. Smithline today, since the court has obviously not yet ruled on our motion to withdraw. Please let me know by 12 Pacific whether you agree to take the deposition off the calendar. I cannot make a specific representation as to when Ms. Smithline could be available to reschedule. In our motion to withdraw, we ask the court for a 90-day extension, extension of current discovery deadlines in Smithline v. Warner at all, at all. Everything about this, by the way, and it was kind of implied to me in the uh, DMs too, he could give two shits about his client, Ms. Smithlaw. He's mm -hmm. very worried about his client, Ms. Bianco. Mm -hmm. And every part of these emails, it's like he only wants to really talk about that. And he keeps pushing that off. And Howard King keeps nagging back at him. Hey, what about how, how about the Smithline thing? What's going on with the Smithline thing? Oh, this wasn't. But Howard's response here isn't isn't just a nag. Howard's response here is my favorite. Oh, we will not be taking the delayed deposition off calendar. One freaking sentence. No salutation, no sign off, no, just no punctuation. <laughs> There's not even a period. <laughs> no, I mean, he he could have he could have just done, you know, in parentheses, go f yourself. Like and it would have it would have relayed the same message. And here we go. Please confirm you oppose the motion for protection we are filing on behalf of Ashley Smith line. Thanks, Jay. And here we go doing a lot of things on behalf of Ashley Smithline. Uh, yeah. Here we go. What are the grounds? She was supposed to appear two weeks ago for her duly subpoena deposition. An appearance confirmed on multiple occasions by you. On the day before her appearance, you represented that she had flown to the United States to obtain emergency psychiatric treatment and therefore could not appear. Rather than forcing you to make a motion for protection at that time, we made a professional accommodation to you to continue the deposition date. You promised to nonetheless immediately com complete a full document production, representing that you had already had the responsive documents in your possession. Apparently the representation was not accurate as the promised production was not made, typos and all. You also promised written evidence from the treating professional of Ms. Smithline's medical inability to have attended the deposition. You also failed to provide that documentation. Finally, you promised Ms. Smithline would appear for her deposition tomorrow. 
You have ignored multiple questions from me seeking confirmation. She will appear tomorrow for a deposition. So yes, we oppose and would ask that this entire email be included as part of your motion. Mm -hmm. And then here we go again. Um, oh. I just filed a motion to withdraw as her lawyer and you're asking me what grounds are for filing a motion to move the deposition she is scheduled for tomorrow. I'm clear on that, right? Because I will absolutely, I absolutely will be including this exchange in our certificate of conference. It's Basically, it's a, it's a statement that you have to confer with counsel and try to resolve the matter before filing a motion. This guy's Am a prick. I... Jay, is she showing up for her deposition tomorrow or not? I have not canceled the videographer or court reporter. That's a good question, too. Would the cost be um, leveled on the uh, plaintiff? Mm -hmm. All right, Howard, we are preparing to file a motion for protection to prevent tomorrow's deposition from going forward after first requesting that you voluntarily reschedule the deposition to save the court the trouble of ruling on this issue after we already had to file a motion to withdraw as Ms. Smith lies counsel. And I informed the court reporter that we would be filing a motion for protection. Could I have been any clearer? Oh my God, the pain in my head right now. Could I have been any clearer? You mean like when you said that your client was in the United States with a one sentence email? Uh, like, uh... you are not at all clear. If your motion for protection is not granted today, will Ms. Smith line appear for her deposition tomorrow at 8 a.m.? Our position is that the filing for the motion protection operates to stay compliance with the subpoena, so Ms. Smithline will not be appearing tomorrow. Yeah, that's also not how that thing works. You actually have to have an order. She's subject to subpoena. Like, like that that's the thing. Like, you don't get to, a subpoena is a document that legally compels your attendance unless you have an order saying you don't have to. So, no, you don't get to do that. You just not showing up is a violation and therefore the judge can impose sanctions. Uh, we have when less than that... an hour to counsel. Okay, so that's new. Mm -hmm. He's giving it a timeline. Um, from him, hopefully in the next hour. What the hell? Dun, dun, dun. Ah, now he's saying it. Just got a phone call from her. Who blurted out to me, you were fired as her lawyer in April. And have not been truthful about the reasons you failed to produce her for deposition. I told her that I could not speak to her, and I would immediately let you know the call, which I am doing. Please let me know if you I have your consent to speak directly to Ms. Smithline. Ha! Ah, you do not have my consent. Thank you for alerting me. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is obviously helpful for Manson. Oh, it gets big, uh, page 75. I mean, if you were representing Manson, this would be a dream for you. Huh. <laughs> okay, hold on. So here we go. Um, I same, told, it's just no, the same with thread. I know you told me, and then short of me telling, uh, saying you're sacked and I fire you, what can I do? Which is kind of what we were saying. If she did say it, and he's still there, but she's not allowed to talk to anybody. That's kind of a certain hell, isn't it? Yep. I, I don't care if there's miscommunication issues or if there's statements about her being in a country or another. I don't care. What I care about is a lawyer making representations to the court and to the client and to opposing counsel and engaging in that type of behavior. Look, if you take, like I said at the beginning of this, if 10% of this was correct, then this guy is, is fighting for his license. That one sentence where he says, you know, it's not that simple. I have to tell the court who your new attorney is before they let me out. That, that one statement is enough to make a client feel trapped. Like they don't have a choice. You can't do that. You cannot make a client feel bound or trapped to you. It is their right. You are their agent. You are their proxy. Not to say that they own you, but you don't do shit. 
to try and keep them bound in that relationship. That's not how that works. Hmm. I don't know. She seems to be trapped in a certain kind of hell. Okay, so we've got just attachments. Oh, Q. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it keeps going every time I'm like, okay, we're... Oh, wait, no, there's more. No, it's, that's just a repeat. No, it's not. No, um, text messages. It's just that statement. She says, Do you I, see I, how I, he's I, lying? I wouldn't trust a fruit bat more than him. Fruit bats <laughs> are the little tiny ones with the little bitty <laughs> brains, the little bitty ones, the pretty ones, the ones that aren't that scary looking. He's a fruit fly. <laughs> I guess. All right. And I think this is it finally on this uh, 92 pages of receipts. Jesus. Shoe fly don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs>